I'm going to make 99% of your UI right now. I made it for you. Keep watching, I'll explain it all. You see, when you look at all the games you play, you realize information needs to be displayed, it needs to be legible, and we need flexibility to add and remove visual hierarchy. So you realize that a huge chunk of UI is just text, border, background. And since Unity already gives you text and background for free, you just need to make a border. This works for so many styles of games and you can just build on top of this formula to make your game shine. Build it once, save it as a prefab, and then reuse it like a design system. It's so flexible and very performant. This works for so many styles of games, so just build on top of this formula and make your game look good. So firstly, we need to make our border in Photoshop or something like that. Photoshop has by far the best export quality I've ever used. Uh, you can use whatever you want though. You want the border to be roughly the same size as how it will be shown in games. So don't go making a 1024 by 1024 when you're only using it for this tiny 48 pixel size. You might need a few different sizes of the same border. So you could do like a border small, border medium, border large. Keep your pixels to an even and whole number for the best quality. Oh yeah, keep the border white. It allows Unity to recolor it and create interactivity. We'll talk about that later. All right, so we import the border into Unity. Let's set the right settings. Let's nine slice the shit out of it. Create the empty parent. You're gonna have two things sitting inside this. We're gonna have a background and we're gonna have a stroke. The background, we don't even need an image. Unity will fill the background with any color we want. Set the stroke to our image, to the same image that we exported. We'll set the background to stretch. This is important for flexibility so we can scale our box to any size that we want. If we pull the parent game object we've just made down into this project panel, it'll become a prefab, which is Unity for like a symbol or a component. Uh, it does mostly the same thing as Figma. To edit it, you can double click on the prefab to edit the master component, or you can click on the arrow to edit the instance of the prefab. Just like Figma, you can apply overrides to an instant and then revert or apply those changes later. It's pretty handy. I'm just gonna go place these elements around the page and then show you all the different ways that we can use this. Here is an example of all the different things that you can do with this. In our fantasy medieval kind of game, we've got an orange border We've got a black background with a bit of opacity to it, and we select a font that has this serif to it. When we have the minimal AAA style, we'll set the background uh, to black to 50, 20% opacity. Uh, we'll really make the stroke nice and light, maybe non-existent, and we'll use a basic sans serif. It's boring, but it gets the job done. For our cozy farming sim, we want to use all different shades of tan. We'll keep the opacity at 100% and that will make sure that we have complete legibility over all the different textiles that we're going to use. There are just so many ways to expand on this. White to grey gradients, multiple strokes, background textures, rounded corners. You can download the project files in the description. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more UI content in the future.